Let me read to you a passage from the 11th chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 19 to 27. It's the Gospel for the Feast of St. Martha on July the 29th. St. John writes, Many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother Lazarus. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. That's from John chapter 11, verses 19 to 27, for the Feast of St. Martha on July the 29th. What does it suggest to us? Well, throughout the Gospel of St. John, the author, St. John, describes himself as, and I quote, the disciple Jesus loved. We notice that he is not the only one denoted in this way. Notice how John refers to Lazarus and his two sisters, Martha and Mary. He says, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. That's in chapter 11, verse 5. The sisters themselves send Jesus a message saying that the one whom you love lies here sick. So Jesus is the one who loves. St. Paul refers to himself in the same terms in one of his letters. He writes that, and I quote, Christ loved me and gave himself up for me. We remember the rich young man who came to our Lord and asked what more he needed to do to gain eternal life. He had kept God's commandments ever since his youth. We are told that our Lord looked on him and loved him. That young man was the object of the special love of Jesus, and in the event he turned away from it. We are reminded by these references that the distinctive character of Christian discipleship is faith in Jesus and being the object of, G of Christ's personal and special love. Our Lord said to his disciples, I have not called you servants, but friends. The disciple of Christ places his full faith in Jesus and in his word, and he has the wonderful privilege of his friendship. All are called to this. Just before he ascended into heaven, Christ charged his disciples to go to the whole world and make disciples of all the nations. Everyone is called to believe in Jesus and to be his personal friend. Our gospel passage today that I read earlier shows Martha to be the object of Christ's love. And loving him in, in her turn, she had full faith in him and in his word. And the magnificence of her faith is shown by the fact that it reflects exactly the point of St. John's Gospel as given to us in the 20th chapter. That gospel was written, we read, that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And this, as we read in today's gospel passage, is the faith which Martha professed before our Lord. But of course, the faith and love of Martha serves to glorify Christ. Anything he asks of God, God will grant, she tells him. Your brother will rise again, he tells her. Yes, I know he will rise at the last day, she replies. And then our Lord, in simple terms, makes claims that have never been made by any other person who has commanded the respect of the world. We read, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. To refer to himself calmly and explicitly as the resurrection and the life 
is to speak of himself as being divine. Only God is the source of life. We read in the Old Testament that great prophecy of the Valley of the Bones representing the house of Israel. The prophet then sees the bones come back to life. A great army rises from the bones. It is the work of God giving life to the bones. He is raising the dead to life. Christ speaks of himself in the same terms. He raises the dead to life and he himself is the life. I am the resurrection and the life. What prophet spoke of himself in such terms? It is inconceivable that Moses or Elijah or, or Elisha or Jeremiah or John the Baptist would have spoken in this fashion. Imagine Buddha or Muhammad saying such things. It would never have occurred to them to make such a claim. But Christ unhesitatingly did. And this characterized the teaching of his public ministry. The leaders of the Jews were bent on destroying him because he made himself equal to God. Moreover, Christ not only claimed this, but he also gave to us the key enabling us to receive from him the inestimable benefits he came to give mankind. Those benefits we may sum up as abundant life. I have come that they may have life and have it in abundance, he said. The key to receiving these wonderful blessings is faith in him. As he says to Martha, Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. But the next question is, is crucial. Do you believe this? He asks Martha. Well, Martha is our model in her reply. Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. Let us look on, and let us look to Christ as the Lord and Master of our life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. In him we have every heavenly blessing. Martha, in our gospel passage that I read earlier, provides for us a constant example of faith. Her faith is unhesitating and it is correct. She has grasped the fact and has believed totally. Let us listen to the church in, her, in all her testimony and doctrine about Christ and receive it wholeheartedly, resolving to base our lives upon it. Therein lies the path to life eternal.